here at the Waikiki Beach Walk Plaza. Our mission is really to promote the beauty of our culture and how we enjoy our music. La Mele no Napua translates to music for our generations, for it doesn't discriminate whether it's the past, the present, or the future. Because it's the heartbeat of Aloha, heartbeat of our people. It's a universal language and how we can share our culture with our visitors, even with our locals. And in the words of keeping it Hawaiian, keeping it local, keeping our music intact and making sure that we can benefit by sharing this with all of our generations, from the past, into the present, into the future, it's not always just about the music, but it's one way that people and our visitors can tap into our, our people through the music and be able to have that relationship and build that relationship over time. Aloha Vacationers. We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo. The sunset at Sky Waikiki, rooftop restaurant, lounge, and nightclub. Join us for the best happy hour in town, every day from 5 to 7 p.m. in the main lounge, with live music on Fridays and Saturdays at 6 p.m. Enjoy drinks from just $4 and try some of our $10 appetizer specials. Hawaii's ultimate rooftop experience is only at Sky Waikiki. My name is Kumuhula Blaine Kamalani Kia. Today, hula has revived itself in Waikiki. Hula means to dance. It is really the poetry of the movement. Hula Awana is the modern dances. We have been influenced uh, from an ancient style of dance. Awana li literally means to wander. So we wandered away from our ancient root. The movement of the hula really reflects everything in life, the elements, all the things that were created in nature. It is what we utilize with our heart and our spirit and which allows us to move. Always be aware of your surroundings, always observe nature because all of our lessons can be taught to us and how we're supposed to live as human beings if we only look at nature more often. Hula is really a way of life for us in our practice. People that come from afar will now understand what is truly Hawaiian. <laughs> The 18th annual Duke's Ocean Fest, August 17th through 25th. Sign up now for our new events. Duke's Diamond Head Blue Water Paddleboard SUP Race. 32 Beach Boys compete for the bragging rights to be King of Queens Beach. Cheer on the Keiki in the Matson Menihuni Surf Fest. Bark with the dogs at Calvin and Susie's Going to the Dogs. And don't miss the Outrigger Hotels and Resorts Legends Surf Classic and more. Presented by Hawaii Tourism and support the Outrigger Duke Kahanamoku Foundation. Go to dukesoceanfest.com.
Aloha, I'm Cindy Polly Rothio. Join me as I explore the history, culture, activities, and dining of Oahu's North Shore. The North Shore is just about one hour outside of Waikiki. To get there, take the H1 Freeway West to the H2 North. Follow the signs to Wahiwa and the North Shore. Pretty soon you'll see signs pointing to Haleiwa Town. North Shore actually is quite a very significant historical place to the native Hawaiian people, uh, beginning with Waimea. Waimea means sacred water. Well, um, Haleiwa, which is very well known today, isn't really the name of that place. It's actually known as Wailua. Uh, Haleiwa was the name of a, of a, like a hotel. And it actually got its name changed, but uh, the real name of that area is, is called Wailua, meaning basically two rivers. There are, no, there are no natural lakes, no natural running streams here in the islands of Hawaii. It's all fed by ua or rain. So without rain, there would be no lakes, there would be no rivers. But uh, fortunately, areas like Waimea uh, usually has a good running uh, stream with water. And that's one of the very first places that our ancestors actually settled on the North Shore, uh, making it a very significant place. Inalua is something that is very important to the Hawaiian people. It's actually not a sport, it's a religious activity, it's a way of life. For example, when the Europeans first came here, they noticed that all the villages were empty during the winter time. They thought there was a disease or a famine because there was nobody around, when in fact, all the families from the small child to the eldest elemakuli or oldest person was in the water or at least on the water uh, and on the beaches betting on their favorite surfers. So surfing is very well known today as it was anciently, but again, today it's a sport, a kahului. Anciently, it was a way of life. I gotta tell you, you really haven't experienced the country till you've been to Kuaina Sandwich Shop. Opened in 1975 right here in Haleiwa Town, their juicy char-broiled burgers have become world famous. If you're not in the mood for beef, you'll be sure to find something that hits your spot, like a grilled mahi-mahi sandwich or seared ahi salad with avocado. But you gotta try the half-pound bacon cheeseburger. Dine in or out, wherever you grind them, Kuaina is gonna fill you up. When on the North Shore, a must stop is the Quicksilver North Shore Board Riders Club. We carry an extensive line of Quicksilver and Roxy and keep new and cool inventory all year round. We offer an exciting selection for women, men and children, as well as boards that are custom designed by the North Shore's top shapers. Whether you're heading to the beach, into the surf, or for a night on the town, we offer exactly what you need to showcase Hawaii's island lifestyle. Be sure to visit our location in the North Shore Marketplace. Whether visiting or local, a visit to the North Shore Board Riders Club is a must. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki. I'm here at Matsumoto's grocery store where they've been serving up shave ice for decades. Now it's arguably the best place to get shave ice here on the North Shore. Let's go in and see if it's true. My parents, Mamoru, and my mom, Helen Matsumoto, started this business actually as a grocery store back in 1951. So we didn't sell shave ice until maybe five years after. Strawberry and mango coconut cream. Well, the North Shore is like the last part of the country on Oahu and um, I like it out here because the ocean, like for surfing and there's hardly any uh, tall buildings out here so you like the country look and a lot of people from Honolulu come out here on their day off to come out here to um, get away from the city. Hard to believe this quaint, laid-back lifestyle exists just an hour away from the hustle and bustle of metropolitan Honolulu. It's this relaxed culture that produces local delights.
Walk into the magical world of a Hawaiian botanical wonderland and feel the earth cradle you at Waimea Valley. Let the fragrance of sweet ginger flowers lead you to the varied heliconia blooms of exotic colors and forms. Listen to the fall of water and let it soothe and renew you. Discover the life of the early Hawaiian people through stories and cultural sites. Waimea Valley, a place of peace and Hawaiian spiritual feeling where Hawaii comes alive. Art is the visual expression of the human experience and no two humans have had the same experience in life. So everyone's gonna have a little different feel for different expressions and mediums and, you know, so it's a very personal thing when you, when you purchase art. So even if I had a specific piece I love the most, it may not mean the same, probably wouldn't mean the same to other people. So that's why we have such a divergence of art in, in our gallery. The Oceans in Glass Gallery, which is right next door in the North Shore Marketplace, uh, is I actually started that just before this one. And it was started for uh, a glass master named Krista Woodward, uh, who is one of the finest in the world. It has been so successful from the first month we opened 15 years ago. Every piece she makes has been sold out of that gallery for 15 years. She doesn't sell anywhere else. Uh, and it's a very special art form called lamp working or flame work and it actually predates glass blowing by many centuries as an art form. It's just rare because it's only taught from a master to an apprentice. So someone who wants to learn it has to find a master like Krista to teach them. Inspired by the art of the Pacific Islands. No I know. No I know. No I know. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Color and comfort. Noa Noa. Feel the spirit of Polynesia. Noa Noa. From morning to night. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Noa Noa. Always elegant. Noa Noa. North Shore is from a bird's eye view. Hard left turn. Oh, this aircraft is really about recreation. It's not really all that great for transportation. If you want to get from point A to point B, I don't necessarily recommend a trike, but if you want to really enjoy getting from point A to point B and you're not in a hurry, this is the aircraft for you. The flights that we do are actually hands-on instructional flights where we let every person we take flying um, take the controls and fly the aircraft as much or as little as they like. It's totally up to them how hands-on they want it to be. And away we go. The flight
flights that we do, they range from a half hour up to two hours, so we really got a lot of time to get to know our customers. Um, a lot of our customers ask a lot of questions about the North Shore. They want to know about the waterfalls and the, um, the beaches along the way, the sea life we have out here. So on top of being a really great flight along the North Shore, it's a real educational experience for them as well. From the sky, the North Shore is stunning. Now we head to the beach. When visitors come here, they definitely know that it's someplace special. The water's really blue. The sand is really fine and beige, and you definitely feel like you're in paradise. We pride ourselves in being very laid back. <laughs> uh, you can cross the street here anytime you want. Cars will stop and let you across the street. You know, it's a, it's a walk-free, uh, friendly town. Uh, people come up here and they just relax. I mean, from the time you come over the pineapple fields and see the open ocean and the beautiful uh, agricultural fields, people just relax. And when they get into Haleiwa, that is exemplified in the community itself. With so much to do, what are you waiting for? Come down and enjoy Oahu's North Shore. My name is David Bailey. We're here at Bailey's Antiques and Aloha Shirts down at the uh, Diamond Head end of Waikiki. The first ones were right around 1930. I was a Japanese tailor here who made kimonos and they didn't sell very well so using the silk kimono lining he made a shirt for some tourists and it caught on very quickly. A Chinese tailor then patented the name Aloha shirt in 1931. We have influences from all over the Pacific, of course Asia and Hawaii, as well as uh, artists from the mainland, bringing motifs such as pineapples, uh, surfers, hula girls, etc. They come in silk, cotton, rayon, polyester, uh, and then it's pretty much your taste as for you know, what background color and what, what kind of design you really like. It gives the customer an ability to express themselves in a laid-back sort of manner that fits with the Hawaiian culture. I think that this is the best place in the world to buy Aloha shirts. We have over 15,000 different ones. We have 2,000 shirts that are under $10. We have 5,000 under $20. But for instance, when Jimmy Buffett was here, he paid $5,000 for one antique shirt and the record is actually 25,000 for one shirt. Over the years, we've had a lot of celebrities here, and a, a big spender, of course, is Jimmy Buffett, who's bought over $20,000 of our shirts, and uh, Nicolas Cage, who spent over 10,000 in one minute here. It goes on and on. <laughs> you never know who will come in. You don't need a passport to get the best foods from Japan. You can get it right here at Waikiki Yokocho. Let's check it out. Perfectly crafted and delightfully delicious, musubis are highly sought after and can be found at Shichi Musubi. Made fresh every day, delicate preparation and attention goes into every musubi. The organic omusubi rice, red, brown or white, it's healthy, fresh and the best tasting. Ingredients range from unagi, ume, tuna, vegetables and more. It's the perfect handheld snack to satisfy your hunger on the run or during a moment of zen.
The art of kakao na kauhi, the art of tattooing, has been part of Hawaii ever since the first Polynesians came here. I never started tattooing to become a tattooist. I mean, that might sound odd, but it's the truth. I started doing the work to perpetuate the culture and not necessarily to be a tattooist. It's played a vital role within our society because it indicates rank for certain individuals. It indicates the willingness to sacrifice oneself uh, to a process. And that's the most important thing is, is to, to adhere to the cultural norms and the processes that was laid back thousands of years ago. It is not the people who are in the lower echelons of society that gets work done. Quite to the contrary, it's the people who are of the highest rank that has the most work done. This isn't about you, it's about your ancestors, it's about your children, it's about everybody that comes in that line. And you're just one small part of that. To actually have somebody lying in front of you and me doing the work recreates a scene that was done for thousands of years. And for me, that responsibility is both a blessing and a burden. There's very little in today's society that you can honestly say that this is exactly how it was two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand years ago. With this, you can say that. You do not have to wait for dinner to have delicious island fish. It's really great any time of day. For lunch, you can grab a fish sandwich or some sushi. Uh, then by the time it gets to dinner, the possibilities are just endless. The best thing to do uh, is just ask the server. Ahi is yellowfin tuna, and it can be served any number of ways. Uh, it's made into sashimi, which is raw slices of the fish. It's very popular for poke, which is of course that diced fish with seasoning, which is a Hawaiian preparation. And it's also great on the grill. You can just put a simple pepper crust on it or sear it uh, with any kind of butter sauce or herb sauce. Then mahi-mahi is uh, dolphin fish in Hawaii. It's eaten cooked only. It cannot be eaten raw. It's a white, flaky, tender fish, and uh, people prepare it literally hundreds of ways in our restaurants. Opa actually is pretty popular as well. Opa is the moon fish. It's really interesting to look at. Like most fish, if it's just simply grilled or pan seared, it's just delicious. And then some fish come in and out of season. Uh, Opaka Paka, for example, is a pink snapper and it is incredibly tender. Just the perfect blank canvas, I think, for a chef. A subtle seasoning just makes it perfect. And fish is good for you. It's a great source of protein. Subtlety is key with fresh island fish. What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes, Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. The $4 Killian's Red Wave, this week at Kelly O'Neill's, the Irish Rose and O'Toole's. Mike's Huli Chicken was featured on an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Chef Guy Fieri. So I'm here on the beautiful island of Oahu. I have driven by this place over a hundred times, and this is the place that inspired me to get my own Huli Huli Chicken machine. Ooh, what's that? Mike's Chicken Sauce. Dude, I am telling you what, this is even better than I remember it. That's right, this is the original Mike's Huli Huli Chicken. Check out the whole menu online at mikeshulichicken.com. ワイキキの中心アトランティスシーフードステーキとっておきの絶品ガーリックステーキや新鮮ロブスターなどアトランティスの特選グルメを落ち着いたダイニングと開放的なテラス席でお楽しみくださいセミプライベートルームもございます主要ホテルや免税店からも近く便利なアトランティスシーフードステーキ日本語スタッフがいつでも皆様のお越しをお待ちしています
Aloha, my name is Felicita Garrido. Today we're out here in uh, Wailua. This aina here, our farm is called Namia Kupuno, and you're here on the beautiful north shore of Oahu. This plant here is kalo, also called taro. It's an ancestral plant to the Hawaiian people. It is a plant that shows the connection of the origin of man. The legend goes that Wakea Sky Father had a child with his wife Ho'ohoku Kalani, and she was the daughter of Papa Earth Mother. But that firstborn child was stillborn. So they buried the child in the aina, in the ground, and from that child's grave, this plant, um, kalo, grew. We're here, Wailua, we're going to harvest some kalo, some taro, uh, wetland. So I'm just busting all the roots in my foot. We'll separate each uh, individual plant. This is the makua, what we call the makua. This was what I planted last year. And then from this one plant, it had all of these um, children, keiki we call it, or oha. This is what we call kalo, or the corn, the taro. This is the ha, the stalk is the ha. And ha in Hawaiian also means breath of life, yeah? And this is the lao, the leaf. And this is the luau, the newest leaf that comes out. But to plant next year, what we'll do is, we'll leave like a quarter inch to a half an inch of uh, corn on, on the ha. And this is called the huli. And this is the seed that we'll plant and that will become your next crop for next year. So what I'll do is I'll dry this out for a day and then I'll put it into a new patch. And that's, uh, that's the harvesting um, process. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki. The sunset at Sky Waikiki, rooftop restaurant, lounge, and nightclub. Join us for the best happy hour in town every day from 5 to 7 p.m. in the main lounge with live music on Fridays and Saturdays at 6 p.m. Enjoy drinks from just $4 and try some of our $10 appetizer specials. Hawaii's ultimate rooftop experience is only at Sky Waikiki. Hawaiians view the earth the land as a part of our family and so therefore when we are planting the kalo we are continuing that relationship of we take care of the land and the land takes care of us. So this is the corn of the kalo and um, we cooked it for two hours and now what I'm doing is I'm going to do the first rough clean. I'm taking out the outer skin. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the knife. And in, in old Hawaii, they use the shells, the opihi shells, to scrape. But good way to practice our Hawaiian values of aluhike, working together, kokua kahi, ike kahi, help one another. OK, now we're going to go kui. Here we have our kalo that we had cooked, steamed, that is ready to be pounded. This is our papa kui ai. It's made out of uh, a monkey pod. And this is our pohaku kui ai, made out of stone. Pohaku is stone, kui is to pound, and ai is to eat, yeah? So, papa kui ai, pohaku kui ai. Have some pieces of kalo. And then we don't really start pounding right away. What we want to do is we want to use the round part of the, the pohaku and smash it. So in the olden days, they would pound for like all day long, you know, to feed everybody in the village, yeah? Everybody would have their own job and say, your job was to eat. This is what you would do all day long to feed your village or your family. And here we go. This is Paiai.
our kuleana, our responsibility to make sure that we teach our keiki, our children of today, to walk humbly on the earth and, and treat the earth um, with respect because the earth is what gives us life. The people of Hawaii, we are the kalo that are planted in this aina. And so we are the ones who have that kuleana to take care of the land, to preserve what we have, and to pass on to the next generation um, the treasures of Hawaii so that Hawaii will continue to live. A Samoan fire knife dancing is uh, probably uh, the one of the most daring, courageous dance in the world. This is beautiful, this is what Hawaii is all about. Just the title is very, it's a very big title in the, in the islands. It means a lot to be a world champion. There's a lot of people in this world to be the best at that is an amazing feeling. My father is actually a fire knife dancer as well. He was traveling around the world doing fire knife dancing. I started to dance in a Tahitian dance group called Toa Reva. In this dance group, everybody dances with the fire. 11 years I've been dancing fire knife dance. I love it so much that I stopped to be a Tahitian dancer and just be a fire knife dancer. Every year actually I try to add some, uh, some new moves, like two or three moves, because if you don't add some new tricks, it's very difficult and the other competitors are so great, so you have to keep it up too. I wish to come every year. If you want to meet the best and become one of the best, you have to compete with the best. It made me very, very proud being a Polynesian. And you need not be Polynesian to feel uh, excited uh, and certainly have your spirits uplifted. You see this young man, uh, Michaele, win again for the second time in a row. That's awesome. This year was very, very tough. It's a very good feeling. It's a good competition. The 18th annual Duke's Ocean Fest, August 17th through 25th. Sign up now for our new events. Duke's Diamond Head Blue Water Paddleboard SUP Race. 32 Beach Boys compete for the bragging rights to be King of Queens Beach. Cheer on the keiki in the Matson Menihuni Surf Fest. Bark with the dogs at Calvin and Susie's Going to the Dogs. And don't miss the Outrigger Hotels and Resorts Legends Surf Classic and more. Presented by Hawaii Tourism and support the Outrigger Duke Kahanamoku Foundation. Go to dukesoceanfest.com. What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes, Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. The $4 Killian's Red Wave, this week at Kelly O'Neill's, the Irish Rose and O'Toole's. I'm Makana, and here we are in my home, near Kaimuki. The style of guitar that I grew up playing is called Hawaiian slack key guitar. We call it slack key because, first of all, the way of tuning it, we slack the keys or loosen the keys into a chord. And the reason for doing that is um, by tuning the guitar to a chord, it frees up the hand so I don't have to hold a chord anymore. It allows uh, the player's hand to be free to alter the sound. It's also a way of playing where the player simulates a bass, rhythm, and melody simultaneously. So in essence, slack key guitar is simulating two or three guitars on a single guitar. And when you listen to it, it sounds like that. It sounds very symphonic. It's a music that conveys the essence of Hawaii. You could be sitting uh, in a flat in New York or Tokyo or anywhere in the world and put on that Hawaiian song and it gives you a sense of place, a sense of feeling. Eventually in the 20th century, sometime around mid-century, 
the slack key guitar artist started to record. Of course, one of the most famous recordings is Gabi Pahinui singing He Ilave. As they began to record, as I mentioned before, the Hawaiian Renaissance came about of music and culture, and so this slack key guitar art form became uh, adopted as a national folk art. And today, many of the masters have passed away, but the style is still alive, it's still thriving. Slack key guitar, uh, when I was growing up learning it, it was a very strict discipline. I was taught by the masters, and in order to learn it, there were certain things, certain disciplines that you had to acquire and master. So for me, playing Hawaiian music goes beyond just uh, music. It goes into a realm of this eternal perpetuation of the pure essence of Hawaii. No matter what happens with the physical Hawaii, Hawaiian music always contains that spirit of Hawaii and it's eternal, yeah, it, it never changes, so it can always convey it no matter where you are or who you are. And that to me is magic. Aloha. Poi comes to us from the taro or kalo plant. Uh, the one that we use for making poi is a wetland variety. And after steaming, it looks like this. Let's make some poi, shall we? To make poi, all we do is take the cooked kalo and we take a stone and we mash it. You can just smell the aroma of this corn that was cooked in an underground oven. After mashing the taro, what we need to do is to add water to stretch it. Poi can last for days or even weeks. However, after a day, poi will start to sour and it'll take on a tangy flavor but it is still edible. This would be perfect for taking on long voyages out in the open ocean. This is how we eat it traditionally, and even today. You use two fingers, you take from the center of the bowl, with a twist, up, and with one motion, into the mouth. Ono, oh delicious. There's really no such thing as the best beach on the island. They're all great, but here are just a few. Waikiki Beach is not just a beach. It's actually a series of beaches. At the very east, you've got Kaimana Beach. That's closest to Diamond Head. Then at the very west, you've got Kahanamoku Beach, which is named for Duke Kahanamoku. Waikiki used to be a barrier beach. It used to be between the wetlands and the ocean, and the wetlands were filled in to build the Alawai Canal, which is what made the resort area that's here now. Waikiki is the place where a lot of people get their first surfing lesson, where they first start stand up. Uh, it's great for snorkeling, swimming. It's great for everything. Moana Beach Park is one of the most popular beach parks in Honolulu. The waters are very calm and shallow. It's got a 2,000 meter swim course, so you'll see people swimming there, you'll see people doing stand-up paddle there, and a lot of families. Um, there's a big nice grassy park and people will come and park there on a weekend day with their families. Hanama Bay is not just a beach park, it's actually a nature preserve and it's administered by both the city and the state. Um, the water is very pure and very clean and there's this incredible array of ocean life living there. It's actually a volcanic crater and the outer rim of the crater has been breached by the ocean and this was thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, so the ocean flooded the crater floor and the bay was created. Hanama Bay was showcased in Blue Hawaii, which was one of Elvis Presley's most famous movies.
Kailua Beach is one that you're always going to see on the best beaches listings in magazines and on websites. It's very long. It's on the windward side of the island and at the sand there is really hard and tightly packed so a lot of people like to go running there at low tide. It does get pretty crowded but really only on the weekends and the holidays. The trade winds are always blowing at Kailua so that keeps it very cool and it also makes it very good for certain kinds of water sports like windsurfing. Malai Kahana State Park is right on the ocean and it's right between Malai Kahana Beach and Laie Beach and they're both really beautiful, really sandy, they're very secluded. What you'll see there is a lot of drift material which comes in with the trade winds from up north where all of the Japanese fishing boats are. Waimea Bay is in the heart of the North Shore and it's famous for being a big wave riding spot because in the winter the surf at Waimea gets really big like between 25 and 30 feet and that's when a lot of big wave surfers will come from all around the globe um, and that's also when you'll see the Quicksilver Eddie I Cow contest and that contest was named in Eddie's honor and it's only held if the surf is 25 feet or higher. Eddie Aikau is the inspiration behind those Eddie Would Go stickers that you'll see, the bumper stickers on cars. He was a lifeguard at Waimea, and he's really a local hero um, who gave his life to save the lives of others. Then in the summer, Waimea is beautiful for swimming and snorkeling. And it's also home of the famous Jump Rock, so people will go up there and it's about a 30-foot drop down to the water. At Waimea, just check in with a lifeguard. There are always lifeguards there, seven days a week, all year round, and uh, just always make sure it's safe to swim. When on the North Shore, a must stop is the Quicksilver North Shore Board Riders Club. We carry an extensive line of Quicksilver and Roxy and keep new and cool inventory all year round. We offer an exciting selection for women, men and children, as well as boards that are custom designed by the North Shore's top shapers. Whether you're heading to the beach, into the surf, or for a night on the town, we offer exactly what you need to showcase Hawaii's island lifestyle. Be sure to visit our location in the North Shore Marketplace. Whether visiting or local, a visit to the North Shore Board Riders Club is a must. If you head all the way out west to Ko'olina Resort, they have four man-made lagoons. The main draw of those is their safety. Even with the high surf that you'll see often on the west side, the lagoons are protected by these outer arms and they're always calm and they have sandy bottoms. The resort is private, but the lagoons are open to the public and there's plenty of parking. White Plains Beach is a lesser known beach. It's right in the middle of what used to be the Barber's Point Naval Air Station. Uh, it's really nice. It's a lovely white sand beach. It's really good for finding shells, for sunbathing. People go there to swim. And some even call it the Waikiki of the west side because the inside breaks are actually really good for beginning surfers. People from all over the island go to White Plains. To 
get there, just head west on the H1 freeway and take the Kapolei cutoff. Regardless where you end up, remember to consider safety first, and also to treat your natural surroundings with aloha. Aloha Vacationers. We hope you're having a wonderful time in paradise. Outrigger Resort Club by Wyndham can help you keep the fun going. Pick up a Hawaiian souvenir at our desk next to the activity center. Mahalo. There was a kind of a dichotomy in the ancient Hawaiian universe between the realm of people and the realm of the gods. The Wau Kanaka was the realm of people. Kanaka is a person in Hawaiian. And that was in the lowlands, next to the sea, next to your agricultural fields and your house. Um, and the Wauakua, the realm of the gods, was in the uplands, where that which grew was not as a result of human effort. I mean, it was a result of a higher power. In ancient Hawaii, um, the protocols for entering native forests were pretty rigorous. You never went there, really, unless you had a really good reason to, to go there. Uh, one would leave the comfortable realm of people behind, enter into the realm of the gods, essentially, um, and ask permission to enter. Uh, this would be accompanied by chant. So here we are up in the Ko'olawa Mountains, which is the backdrop over Honolulu. And today we're going to be talking about Hawaiians and the natural world and the way that the natural world interweaves so tightly in Hawaiian culture. This is a koa tree. Koa is dominant, especially in the lowland mesic forest. Mesic is one of those words that means not too wet and not too dry. Koa loves those middle conditions. And uh, this one's a fairly hefty one for the island of Oahu. It's those massive koa trees that form the hulls of the voyaging canoes. Koa is also the Hawaiian word for warrior. The fierceness and the steadfastness of a warrior is embodied in this tree. Just about every single native plant in the Hawaiian forest has a story about its use and its significance in Hawaiian culture. This is pukiave and it's a native shrub. It's a heather. And it grows anywhere from low elevations like this all the way up to tree line at nearly 10,000 feet on the island of Hawaii. So it's a very versatile and hardy shrub. The wood of the pukiave is very flammable. In ancient times, and even to today, the ashes and the smoke of the pukiave are used to uh, temporarily lower the status of high-ranking people. In ancient times, the Hawaiian uh, chiefs would have what is called mana, it's called spiritual presence or power, and the pukiave was used to temporarily lower the mana of high chiefs in order for them to be able to interact with folks of different levels of, of spiritual power. We've run across one of the most famous trees in the Hawaiian flora. Um, this is sandalwood. It was one of the first economic crops in, in Hawaii. One of the interesting things about Hawaiian plants is that they're usually full of pigments. This one might be might yield a really nice orange brown or yellowish brown dye. So I'm going to take some of these um, some of these cuttings and see what I can make of it a little bit later. In Hawaiian thought, uh, all of the plants and animals um, are the physical manifestations of, of thousands of gods and goddesses. 
This plant is called Naupaka Kuahivi. Down at the shore, um, there is an ocean shrub with much larger shiny leaves. Um, that's called Naupaka Kahakai. Kahakai means at the ocean side. So the Naupaka Kahakai is the ocean equivalent, and Naupaka Kuahivi is its counterpart here, way up in the uplands. In Hawaiian thought, the uplands are considered masculine, and the ocean side is considered feminine. And so if you were going to ascribe a gender to this plant, um, Hawaiian tradition would say that this is the man, and the woman would be the naupaka kahakai down at the ocean. You can pick one of these flowers, rush down to the seaside, pick another flower from the ocean naupaka, put them together, and they'd be made whole again. Ah, here we have pala'a. Um, it's one of the favorites for lei making. Um, for all its delicate features, if you pick the pala'a, it will maintain this fresh green look for days, um, if you treat it right. The ohi'alehua, which is the name of this tree, um, is named for its flower, the lehua. The lehua is the intensely red blossom of the ohi'alehua tree. Ohi'a lehua is the dominant tree in Hawaiian wet forest. The blossoms are beautiful to look at, quite delicate though. This is the symbol of the volcano goddess Pele. Um, and so if you're hiking in the forest, uh, picking a lehua is actually a fairly dangerous thing to do. The ohi'a lehua is the main tree in Hawaiian wet forest, and so it's essential in our watersheds. Um, our watershed forests are why we have such high quality water in Hawaii. To either side of this trail are thick mats of uluhe fern. This is one of the most prolific kinds of native ferns that you find in Hawaii. They can form, you know, a dense mat, a meter or even more in height. In Hawaiian thought, uh, all of the plants and animals um, are the physical manifestations of, of thousands of gods and goddesses. There is a goddess Hina. Hina is the wife of Ku, god of war and governance. If you enter the forest with ill intent or with improper protocol, it's said to come and grow and surround you and you never leave the forest. Over here, we're literally just a few meters away from what was extremely rich and beautiful native forest and we see the dark side of Hawaiian forest now. In an environment as benign as Hawaii, whenever you bring in a new species and it finds a niche that it likes, without its natural enemies in place, it can proliferate without control. It's a very sad thing, and it's one of the major threats to our native Hawaiian forest. I find myself, whenever I'm working in a remote area doing conservation biology, surrounded by the native plants and animals that I know had cultural uses by ancient Hawaiians and that still, that still have powerful significance to me personally today. We're talking about an island system that had millions of years to evolve before the first people got here, the ancestors of Hawaiians. It stands on its own as a biological gem on the globe. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki.
What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes. Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. The $4 Killian's Red Wave, this week at Kelly O'Neill's, the Irish Rose and O'Toole's. Giovanni Palace is the last official residence of the monarchs of the Kingdom of Hawaii. We guide our visitors around the palace as King Kalakaua would have after the palace was finished. King Kalakaua had the palace built as a message to the world that we were a strong independent nation that could deal diplomatically and economically with nations around the world. Kalakaua loved to entertain in the dining room. If you had arrived in Hawaii, you would have been expected to call on the king, especially if you were any kind of important person. Kalakaua liked to sit in the middle of the dining table because that let him converse with all of his guests so he could get to know them better. Lilio Kalani wanted a new constitution. She was introducing it at the request of her people, a group of 13 local businessmen who felt their interests were being threatened by that constitution, banded together and deposed the queen. She was imprisoned in Iovani Palace for a period of a little under eight months. While there, she was allowed no writing materials initially. She began the quilt to speak to the future with thread and fabric about who she was and what had happened to her. Our basement galleries contain artifacts, items used and worn by members of the royal family. What we hope a lot of our visitors go away with is how Hawaii's 19th century history as an independent nation affects Hawaii today. It is the only official residence of royalty you'll be able to visit in the United States. Inspired by the art of the Pacific Islands. No one know. 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 Color and comfort. No one know. Feel the spirit of Polynesia. No one know. From morning to night. No one know. No one know. No one know. No one know. Always elegant. No one know. Hands on your hips, Connie, make a fist. My name is Kumuhula Blaine Kamalani Kia. Today, hula has revived itself in Waikiki. Hula means to dance. It is really the poetry of the movement. Hula Awana is the modern dances. We have been influenced uh, from an ancient style of dance. Awana li literally means to wander. So we wandered away from our ancient roots. The movement of the hula really reflects everything in life, the elements, all the things that were created in nature. It is what we utilize with our heart and our spirit, and which allows us to move. Always be aware of your surroundings, always observe nature, because all of our lessons can be taught to us and how we're supposed to live as human beings if we only look at nature more often. Hula is really a way of life for us in our practice. People that come from afar will now understand what is truly Hawaiian. <laughs> Walk into the magical world of a Hawaiian botanical wonderland and feel the earth cradle you at Waimea Valley. Let the fragrance of sweet ginger flowers lead you to the varied heliconia blooms of exotic colors and forms. Listen to the fall of water and let it soothe and renew you. Discover the life of the early Hawaiian people through stories and cultural sites. Waimea Valley, a place of peace and Hawaiian spiritual feeling where Hawaii 
comes alive. Mission Houses Museum is one of the most important places to learn about 19th century Hawaii. The changes that came about after Captain Cook uh, were immense. We have more Hawaiian language books than any other library in the world, and we have many of the original uh, letters and journals of the missionaries beginning in the 1820s, and uh, those documents really form uh, a corpus of information that uh, you can't find anyplace else. The missionaries came in 1820, just a year after Kamehameha had died and the Kapu system had been overturned. This is a place where the royalty uh, hung out a lot. They were really fascinated with the story of Christianity that the missionaries had to uh, tell, but they were also fascinated by uh, missionary dress, they were fascinated by missionary food, everything about Western life they were fascinated by. And so they came here to learn those sorts of things. In order for them to teach Christianity, the missionaries had to first uh, create a written language. Because according to the missionaries, you had to be able to read the Word of God in order to be, uh, become a Christian. And so the only way to do that was to read the Bible. So we have a reproduction of the printing press that began the whole history of printing uh, on, in the Hawaiian Islands. This quaint little press revolutionized uh, Hawaii, really. By 1853, 75% of all Hawaiians could read and write. It was the second most literate nation in the world next to Scotland. The Mission House of 1821 tells the story of uh, the missionaries living together sort of in a communal way in the first few years that they lived here. They had a common table where all the families sat at. They came as a com uh, community that shared everything. They didn't own anything privately, they owned everything in common. This is such an important place in, in Hawaii. You really can't understand today's Hawaii without coming here and really understanding the role of the missionaries. So this is where you can come and learn that story. We have tours on the hour beginning at 11 o'clock and ending at 3 o'clock. You don't need a passport to get the best foods from Japan. You can get it right here at Waikiki Yokocho. Let's check it out. Looking to sit back, relax, and enjoy a spirited beverage or some cool Japanese drafts? Nomu is the place to be. Nomu has the finest collections of Japanese whiskey in Waikiki. Partake in these appetizers and drinks. Serving unique cocktails, signature drinks, like the matcha old-fashioned, topped with a gold leaf, and specialty whiskeys. This is the one-stop shop to decompress and unwind. Bishop Museum is Hawaii's oldest and largest museum, and it is a very comprehensive collection of both cultural material, meaning relating to human cultures, as well as natural history. The Bishop Museum campus has a variety of buildings, both old and new. There are the historic older buildings, the Hawaiian Hall complex, and that includes Hawaiian Hall, Polynesian Hall. Then there's the planetarium. It's really an outstanding planetarium for the Pacific. And finally, there's the Science Adventure Center, which is aimed at natural sciences, and particularly for the Hawaiian culture. There are many connections to the plants and animals and the natural environment, and that comes out in the Science Adventure Center as well. 
Hawaiian Hall is the largest exhibit space in Bishop Museum. So what visitors see is a very broad overview of Hawaiian culture going back to its mythical beginnings and then finally ending on the third floor with a historical overview of what happened after Western contact coming up to pretty much around the present day. There's so much wonderful stuff to see and read about and listen to. It's so rich, it's so detailed. A great many people have written in our visitor comment book what a tremendous experience it has been to take the trip from Waikiki to come to Bishop Museum. They really do have a good time. It's all exciting to me. The Honolulu Academy of Arts is the premier visual arts museum of Hawaii. This building was opened in 1927. The building echoes Hawaii's place in the Pacific and the galleries are arranged around a series of courtyards. Uh, we have the uh, Chinese courtyard and around the Chinese courtyard are the Asian art galleries and then we have the Mediterranean courtyard and around that courtyard are the European and American art galleries. We always have at least five exhibitions going on. It's a great place for visitors to come because they can see art of Hawaii, art by Hawaii artists. There are internationally recognized masterpieces here by Van Gogh, Matisse, Monet. We have artwork from Picasso to Masami Taraoka, who's probably Hawaii's best known resident artist. It's a total overview of all the exciting trends in art um, from the 20th century. Artists and museum professionals have come here and just been awed by what they find here in the middle of the Pacific. We're very accessible to Waikiki. The public bus and the Waikiki trolley both stop right in front of the museum. We are open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Sunday, 1 to 5 p.m. and admission for the general public is $10. What happens when you get three Irish together on Oahu? $4 Killian's Irish Red. From opening time into the night, big frothy Killian's Irish Red beer, just four bucks at the three famous Irish watering holes, Kelly O'Neill's in the Irish Rose Saloon in Waikiki and O'Toole's Irish Pub downtown. This week, the red wave of Killian's at the three Irish, just four bucks, big ones. And what else? You'll love the friendly atmosphere. Enjoy. ワイキキの中心アトランティスシーフードステーキとっておきの絶品ガーリックステーキや新鮮ロブスターなどアトランティスの特選グルメを落ち着いたダイニングと開放的なテラス席でお楽しみくださいセミプライベートルームもございます主要ホテルや免税店からも近く便利なアトランティスシーフードステーキ日本語スタッフがいつでも皆様のお越しをお待ちしていますアトランティス。And it was discovered by these extraordinary people. They were the greatest explorers on the face of the earth. These extraordinary explorers accomplished these amazing feats without the use of modern instruments, but by relying solely on an innate connection to the winds, waves, and the stars. With the passing of time and the arrival of modern ships and tools, however, The traditional knowledge and practice of celestial navigation and voyaging was nearly lost in Hawaii. But in the 1970s, during a period now referred to as the Hawaiian Renaissance, a group of men formed the Polynesian Voyaging Society to resurrect this ancient wisdom. My own personal interest was in rebuilding what I saw to be the central object. Of Polynesian culture. Why central? 
because were it not for that object, there would be no Polynesians today. Raindrops, they hamper my vision. Falling down and cutting incision. On May 1st, 1976, Hokulea began her epic voyage, a 2,500 mile journey from Hawaii to Tahiti. Hokulea, Hokulea star of gladness, you're the happy star. Oh, Hokulea, star of gladness. After 31 days at sea, Hokulea made landfall in a glorious arrival witnessed by more than 17,000 Tahitians. The pathway to Tahiti had been reopened and something long dormant began to stir in the hearts and minds of all Polynesians. It gave us a kind of hope that the beauty of our culture the wisdom of our ancestors could lead us out of this great deficit that we had fallen into. Over the next 30 years, Hokulea traveled throughout the Pacific to Samoa, Tonga, Rarotonga, and Aotearoa. And in 1999, Hokulea sailed to Rapa Nui, the single most isolated landmass on the planet. 25 years of relearning navigation and voyaging reunited the great nation of Polynesia and inspired renewed interest in other cultural practices, language, dance, and traditional arts. Hokulea's ability to revive and heal is now guiding her next journey that will cover more than 46,000 nautical miles and reach over 80 ports and 26 countries around the world. I mean, the Worldwide Voyage began as an idea. It came from our teachers from the past. It's about bringing community together around common values which we believe in, whether it's culture, whether it's protection of the oceans, whether it's about making sure we have mechanisms to teach leadership to young people. I mean, the journey of the Worldwide Voyage is all about learning in just infinite, extraordinary ways. Every one of us that will be participating go as students and that when we come home, the journey doesn't end. In some ways, it just begins. I gotta tell you, you really haven't experienced the country until you've been to Kuaina Sandwich Shop. Opened in 1975 right here in Haleiwa Town, their juicy char-broiled burgers have become world famous. If you're not in the mood for beef, you'll be sure to find something that hits your spot, like a grilled mahi-mahi sandwich or seared ahi salad with avocado. But you gotta try the half-pound bacon cheeseburger. Dine in or out, wherever you grind them, Kuaina is gonna fill you up. about some of the typical Hawaiian food that we would eat at a luau. The main course at any good luau is kalua kua'a. And kalua is literally the word that means to cook underground in an imu. Kalua kua'a is kua'a that's been slow cooking underground in an imu, six, seven hours. And then when we take the pua'a out after it's been slow cooking, the meat is shredded, we added Hawaiian seasoning to it, and it becomes kalua kua'a, which we serve in abundance at a luau. One of the most popular traditional Hawaiian side dishes would be lomi lomi salmon, or we sometimes call it just lomi salmon. Lomi lomi in Hawaiian means to massage, and that just describes the mixing together of fresh tomatoes, sweet Maui onions, and the secret ingredient, which is the salted salmon. We also have poke. It's the marinated raw fish. Poke means section in Hawaiian, or to cut, or pieces. And it basically is pieces of raw fish. And we also add some Hawaiian sweet onion, a little bit of shoyu, a little bit of soy sauce for that finishing uh, taste. Pipi kaula is Hawaiian beef jerky. It's seasoned beef or brisket, and it's got some Hawaiian sea salt, pepper, a little bit of chili. Oh, oh no, delicious. 
And of course, at a luau, in addition to all of the food, there's always plenty of music, kanikapila, and dancing, and lots of entertainment, and the spirit of aloha. Overlooking the Alawai Yacht Harbor, the Chart House Waikiki Restaurant has been a visitor favorite since 1969. Our menu features the finest dry-aged New York steaks, grilled to perfection, along with famous kahuku prawns and herb-crusted ahi, and complete your meal with our signature lava cake. Enjoy live Hawaiian music nightly with two happy hours every day. For good food, good friends, and good times, come home to the Chart House Waikiki. When on the North Shore, a must stop is the Quicksilver North Shore Board Riders Club. We carry an extensive line of Quicksilver and Roxy and keep new and cool inventory all year round. We offer an exciting selection for women, men and children, as well as boards that are custom designed by the North Shore's top shapers. Whether you're heading to the beach, into the surf, or for a night on the town, we offer exactly what you need to showcase Hawaii's island lifestyle. Be sure to visit our location in the North Shore Marketplace. Whether visiting or local, a visit to the North Shore Board Riders Club is a must. We don't normally open exhibits like this. This is pretty powerful and pretty memorable to say the least. And the Grammy Museum has never smelled so good, <laughs> I can tell you that. impact on the world has been for hundreds of years a little group of rocks in the middle of the Pacific we're here today to celebrate another thing that's initiating something significant because the Hawaiians have contributed specifically to the music world you get to do both you actually have the guitar hold a chord for you so now the guitar is holding a chord so what I'll do is with my thumb I'll create an alternating bass line like this and that'll go through the whole song that just keeps going like a clock and over that you weave a simple melody like I was doing <laughs> And then you play them at the same time like this. So that's what Slack can do.
is awesome be and for all of us sharing and receiving and reciprocating and being and living aloha today mahalo Here at the Waikiki Beach Walk Plaza, our mission is really to promote the beauty of our culture and how we enjoy our music. La Mele No Napua translates to music for our generations, for it doesn't discriminate whether it's the past, the present, or the future. Because it's the heartbeat of Aloha, heartbeat of our people. It's a universal language and how we can share our culture with our visitors, even with our locals. And in the words of keeping it Hawaiian, keeping it local, keeping our music intact and making sure that we can benefit by sharing this with all of our generations, from the past, into the present, into the future, it's not always just about the music, but it's one way that people and our visitors can tap into our, our people through the music and be able to have that relationship and build that relationship over time. Mike's Huli Chicken was featured on an episode of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives with Chef Guy Fieri. So I'm here on the beautiful island of Oahu. I have driven by this place over a hundred times, and this is the place that inspired me to get my own Huli Huli Chicken machine. Oh, what's that? Mike's Chicken Sauce. Dude, I am telling you what, this is even better than I remember it. That's right, this is the original Mike's Huli Huli Chicken. Check out the whole menu online at Mike's Huli Chicken.com.